Welcome to the newest unboxing here on the Needless Things YouTube channel. This one comes courtesy of Audible Interlude, a G.I. Joe podcast. As you can see, this is the variant roadblock figure that's part of the Special Missions Cobra Island series that is exclusive to Target. Uh, I love this box. I've already talked about that. Uh, it's got some great box art on the side. Roadblock in action with his big, huge, whatever kind of crazy gun this is. More on that in a minute. On the side, you can see his specialties are lightning, gigantic bullets, uh, whatever that is, and cannons. I'm just kidding. Those are not his specialties. You can find his specialties on the G.I. Joe website, uh, which you can also find a breakdown of that website as part of the Audible Interlude podcast. Uh, Roadblock is number 11, which means we are missing a few figures from, I guess, the first line here, because 1 through 5 was the first wave, and 6, 7, 8, and 9, I believe, are unaccounted for thus far. On the back of the box, each figure from the Special Missions Cobra Island series features this map of Cobra Island with different objectives highlighted on it. So I think that was a really cool touch, and we'll take a look at these as I go through and uh, open up each of these Cobra Island action figures. So Roadblock, uh, an essential part of the G.I. Joe team. I think he's a great ki candidate for a repaint, although it's a little surprising that his repaint isn't like any of his original figures. But we'll take a look at this and see exactly how great this repaint is. Take my trusty... 1964 box cutter slice right through that tape and while i'm opening up i want to mention that we had some absolutely incredible target who needs that piece of paper uh incredible target employees helping us out today while we were out toy hunting uh everyone we ran into was very nice and went above and beyond the call of duty and helping us get the uh cobra island figures we were able to get all right, let's uh, very carefully get these sunglasses out of here, or <laughs> battle glasses, I don't know. We'll take a look at those in a minute. And this giant cannon. And finally, the man himself, the Cobra Island repaint of Marvin Hinton, a.k.a. Roadblock. Now, we've taking a look at these figures before, but I want to point out again the tremendous articulation that Hasbro is putting on these. It's great butterfly shoulders, excellent joints, nice, deep, double-jointed elbows. Just really, really well done, next-level stuff. And uh, you'll also notice that the neck there has a point of articulation here at the base and where it connects with the head. So you get really nice movement there. Uh, and then there's the waist. And the days of the waist cut joint are hopefully behind us with this great, look at that tremendous range and doesn't break up the profile of the figure in that horrible way. Uh, you've also got the drop hips. It gives you a much bigger range on those. Uh, just overall, really, really well done figures. Now let's take a look at this new portrait. This excellent beard, little communication piece, bandana, top of the head. Uh, just something that's different, very cool, and uh, almost a comp worthy of completely being a different character from the first Roadblock figure. Uh, I'm a little surprised this didn't end up being heavy duty, but it's cool because that means later on down the road, we will get that heavy duty figure. Uh, I actually like this print that's on his uh, tank top here. It looked online in pictures like it was just white, which I, I didn't care for. But in person, the sort of Joe logo here is white. But this is more of a subdued, kind of grayish color. And I think it looks a whole lot better than if it had just been white. I mean, th this I can buy as sort of an undershirt 
type of thing with, with some kind of tech camo on it or whatever. I don't know why it was left out of this area, but I also don't really care because overall, this is a cool, distinctive look and uh, I dig it. Uh, all of the sort of metallic pieces uh, here are all just black. We don't have the gold highlights that we had on the regular roadblock figure. This is uh, really more of a subdued type of figure. All right, he's got his glasses that my son noted actually slot in to oh, holes under his bandana by his ears. Very low profile the way that that works. The left one, there we go. Uh, so it looks great. They look natural. They, they don't like just stick out over the tops of his ears or go on the top of his head or something weird like that. Uh, and they look awesome on. And you'll notice something that I really love. They are indeed translucent. Actual translucent uh, lenses on those things. I think that's just great. And I'm sure there's some kind of digital readout or something in, you know, in story. Uh, now let's take a look at this big giant blaster of indeterminate origin. Uh, this one, I got to say, I think it looks a lot cooler than the silver one that came with the original roadblock figure. This black detailing, uh, I like, was that broiler? I think that's supposed to be broiler. That's interesting. Uh, it's funny though, but considering Roadblock is a chef, uh, so of course he would have the broiler. Uh, just cool. It's a cool design, and I think, like I said, this more subdued version looks a lot better. Uh, still has the removable magazine down there. Uh, still has all the grips. Now we're gonna do as a special treat for you guys a little comparison because I brought along the original broiler, I guess. Now that I know that has a name, I kind of like it more. Uh, so this is the original broiler, a little side by side for you. You'll notice, unfortunately, mine has broken. Uh, the, my guy fell off the shelf and he was holding like this. And this piece was just in his hand, just busted apart because this is, uh, it's not really brittle, but this piece was thin and I guess kind of weak and just broke right off. But I got to say, I don't dislike this original one. But again, this, this more subdued stealth version, I guess, looks cooler to me. I, I really do like this more as a weapon. Uh, as far as the figures themselves, let's take a look at the original roadblock and our new roadblock. And the first thing I see is that the skin tones are slightly different. So the head swap I was thinking about doing probably isn't going to work. Uh, but you can see they share the same trousers. Got an extra piece of kibble over here with some uh, grenades on this little sort of pouch deal here. And he also has this wrist guard, which is cool. This one is lacking the tactical vest. Just, uh, I like how different these are. And again, they could, these could be different characters. And so putting them on the shelf, uh, I don't really have a lot of self-consciousness. Now they do share that lion tattoo. So there's really no way around that. But yeah, hey, maybe after they got recruited to the Joes, they went to the tattoo shop together and got matching tattoos because that's how hardcore and cool they are. I got to say, uh, portrait wise, this one just looks a lot better than this one. Uh, this could use maybe a little better deco app. I'm not sure, but this is a far, far superior, uh, sculpt and look, but still both really cool figures, really big, strong dudes to put on your Joe shelf. Uh, I'm very happy with this roadblock. And like I said, I wasn't entirely sure I would be. I honestly wasn't even sure I'd get him, but 
he's he's a worthwhile secondary version to have, especially with the little added bits and pieces, uh, his cool stealth broiler, and these great shades. So good job, Hasbro. Keep cranking out variants like this, and I'll keep spending my money on your G.I. Joes. Thanks for watching, you guys. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, and uh, hit the bell to get the notifications when new review videos go up. Yo, Joe!